Okay, Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. So, we are back with chapter summary for Physics Semester 1. So, for this time, we will be doing a chapter summary for chapter 8, that is Physics of Matters. And for chapter 8, basically, we have four subtopics and we start with subtopic number 1, that is Stress and Strain. So, basically, for the stress, we have uh, this equation stress with the symbol sigma it is equal to uh, force over area so area here is the cross-sectional area and the unit for stress is pascal okay that is the specific unit for stress and we have train the symbol is epsilon and the equation is change in length or elongation or compression the amount certain object is being elongated or compressed divided by its original length so that is strain and we don't have any unit for strain from the same subtopic we also learn about the graph of stress against strain for a few type of material or to be specific we learn about the stress of a strain for the type of material that are brittle and also ductile okay so for brittle material okay before it break so the end point here is the fracture point or the point where it is breaking or it's not so for brittle material for if you refer to this graph we we have bone and glass as the brittle material so for brittle material it does not give any warning before it is breaking or snapped okay of or for ductile material if you refer to this graph you have steel copper and aluminium okay the graph is not a straight line before it is breaking uh, basically these three materials will undergo a plastic deformation it will change so initially it will it will be elastic but after certain uh, or at certain stage it goes uh, plastic deformation so what does it mean by plastic deformation it means that uh, once you try to deform the material okay and it will not go back to its original shape so the graph is not a straight line it will, it will be a few curve at one line of the graph this is the the examples of certain materials that are ductile for 8.2, we have the Young Modulus. So, Young Modulus is actually telling us about the stiffness of certain material. Okay, how stiff is the is that material? So, and this is the equation for the Young Modulus. The symbol is Y. It is the stress over strain. And hence, we have the symbol is Pascal. So, if we expand the equation, it is stress is force over cross-sectional area the elongation is change in length divided by the original length so this is the equation for the Young's modulus for the uh, area the cross-sectional area it is always depending on your type of uh, material that, that is exerted by certain force so for let's say we have a wire it will give a certain force is either being compressed or elongated so the cross-sectional area of this wire is a circle hence you need to know the area of the circle the formula is pi r squared so this is considered as your general knowledge you have to know the formula for the area of a circle you also have the other equation u u here is the strain energy strain energy is basically energy stored when certain object is being compressed or uh, being elongated so we have potential energy that is trying to oppose or to to oppose the force given to that material so that is strain energy okay it is a type of potential energy so that's why we use u then we also have u over v is v here is the volume uh, this is the strain energy per unit volume to get this this uh, equation okay we actually get it from the graph of stress against strain and the strain energy per unit volume is the area under the graph okay same goes to the strain energy so this strain energy the equation for strain energy is uh, acquired from the graph of f force against elongation 
and the area under the graph is the strain energy so it's half f delta l okay for the heat conduction uh, we have an equation for the rate of heat flow that is q over t okay how fast the heat can flow so bear in your mind heat must be flowing from higher temperature to lower temperature meaning that the initial temperature is bigger than the final temperature so we have a few quantities here we have k is thermal conductivity a is the cross-sectional area delta t is change in temperature so our delta t here is t final minus t initial so since the temperature is flowing from hot area to the cooler area or uh, from higher temperature to lower temperature area then delta t is commonly negative okay it's supposed to be negative and l is the length and it is the length where the heat starts to flow until it is uh, stopping and the whole thing here delta t over l is also known as the temperature gradient we actually can relate with a graph with a graph of temperature against length but before that let me remind you because all of you have learned this for the rate of heat flow we have a, a specific condition or we have a case where at steady state or let's say we have uh, two materials okay that are placed next to each other so this is the condition for example material number one material number two and if the condition is at steady state it is actually telling us that the rate of heat flow is uh, constant it is the rate of heat flow for material number one is equal to the rate of heat flow for material number two so this is important okay we have to know that at steady condition or this is the same case as both uh, material are insulated okay because when it is insulated Okay, there is no heat flow from the sides of the material. So we have the, uh, the same rate of heat flow. So Q1, Q over T for material number 1, Q over T for material number 2. Then you can have negative K, K for material number 1, A delta T over L. And negative K material number 2, A material number 2, delta T over L. So this delta T must be final minus initial final okay uh under the same subtopic heat conduction we also have a graph sketching we have two types of graph sketching the first one is for uh insulated material and the second one is for non-insulated material so what graph we are sketching here is actually the graph of temperature against uh, distance okay or s so the unit is cm then the unit here is kelvin so for insulated material first before we do the sketching we have to understand that if we have a material and uh, it is being insulated so we have a layer of insulator here and we have a higher temperature on our left and lower temperature on our right so the heat flow is in this direction from the left to the right Okay, so when the heat is flowing in the insulated material, there will be no heat or flows out from this side of this material. This heat will be smoothly flowing with the same rate of heat flow. So the graph of uh, temperature against L is going to be straight line graph and it won't touch zero. Okay, it will not reach zero. Uh, for the final temperature so this is how it looks like it must be a straight line compared to non-insulated material if you have a material that is non-insulated and the heat flow here from higher to lower so basically once it starts to flow the heat will, re will release will release from the sides of this material so the rate of heat flow will be Initially, it will be very high. Okay, at the end of the flow, it will be a bit low. So, uh, the temperature gradient is not equal and it is not a straight line graph. The temperature will drop abruptly earlier in the process. And this is the initial and this is the final. For non-insulated material, it will be a curve. And for insulated material, it will be a straight line graph.
So the gradient of the graph here is delta T over L. So we call it as temperature gradient. Okay, the one that we've just introduced to you just now. So this is temperature gradient. And basically our temperature gradient is delta uh, T over L is inversely proportional with the thermal conductivity means that if we have our thermal conductivity is high so the temperature gradient will be low what is thermal conductivity it is telling us about the uh, ability to conduct heat for certain material meaning that if the k is high that material is a, is a very good conductor a uh, good in conducting heat and the last subtopic thermal expansion uh, for solid we have uh, linear expansion then you have area expansion and also we have volume expansion okay so why is this expansion occur it is because of we we supply heat to that material that's why we call it as thermal expansion and the expansion could be in the dimension of linear line linear expansion area and volume and the equation is for linear expansion we have change in length is equal to L0 alpha delta T. Alpha is a um, coefficient of linear expansion. So alpha is actually uh, depending on what, on the type of material we use. Higher alpha will, will give a good rate of expansion. Rearranging this equation, delta L is the change in length. So new length minus uh, initial length. You can also have the equation of new length is equal to L0. 1 plus alpha delta t basically the equation for area expansion is um, having the same pattern quite the same pattern as the linear and also volume expansion so for area we have delta a is equal to a naught and the coefficient is beta we use beta delta t and for mu a is a is equal to a naught 1 plus beta delta t and for the volume we have change in volume is v naught gamma this time we use gamma delta t and v new volume new volume is v naught 1 plus gamma delta t and our delta t here is t minus t naught and there is a relationship between uh, these three coefficient alpha beta gamma so for your information we have beta is equal to 2 alpha beta is actually uh, the the multiplication of two dimension of uh, linear expansion and gamma is actually equal to 3 alpha because we know that for beta is an area expansion so area is length times length so it's two dimension of length and for the gamma is for volume expansion so volume is length times length times length is the length width height okay so we have three dimension of length so that's why we have three alpha and last but not least we have liquid expansion liquid expansion happen for liquid when we supply heat to that liquid and of course when we want to uh, heat up a liquid we need to put that liquid in a container okay so this container is a solid so this is a liquid liquid and you supply heat okay you give heat so basically as the uh, liquid is having a um, better expansion compared to solid so there'll be a, a liquid or volume overflow when we heat up uh, this liquid and this uh, solid or the container so what happened here is to get the volume of the liquid overflow it is equal to change in volume in liquid minus change in volume for the container or the solid Okay, because uh, we know the expansion rate for the liquid is better. So normally it will be having this, this, this kind of equation to solve your uh, problems. So we can have this delta V here, the equation. We can use this equation. Okay, uh, same goes for this container, the change in volume in container. 
we again we can use this equation but of course it will have different values of gamma because it is different material or different matter okay that's all for the chapter summary for chapter 8 hope it is helpful for you to uh, to do the revision so roughly this is what we have for physics of matters okay thank you